Let's turn our Bibles to book of Luke, Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18. We're going to look at verses 9 through 14, 9 through 14. Luke chapter 18, 9 through 14. The title message is, Why Are You Here Today? Why are you here today? Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Why are you here today? The Bible says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Brother Calvin, would you please pray for the message? Another day to come and hear your preaching, hear the word, the truth. And Lord, I just thank you for our salvation, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you love us first, Lord. And Lord, we do love you. Lord, I pray that you give us the Holy Spirit so that we can understand the scripture today. Help us to become better Christians, Lord. And Lord, I pray for the listeners online, Lord. And whosoever are not saved today, Lord. May this message prick your heart. Speak to their soul, Lord. Help them to get saved today, Lord, and not wait till another minute. Lord, I just pray that you fill Pastor right now with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give him the power, authority, and the liberty to preach the truth to yes. us, Lord. Help us to receive humbly, Lord, and help us to truly learn why are we here today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 This is a famous parable, and you see you know, this Pharisee and the publican. And you, you could see the attitudes of the people. One of the most important things that you have to check in your daily walk as a Christian is your attitude. You know, you have a bad attitude, you know, it's not going to work. You know, I mean, Dr. Ruckman has a bad attitude blowout. Well, that's a different, right? When people see your stance in the King James Bible, in the truth and the dispensationalism and doctrine, they think of it as a bad attitude. But it's not. You know, when world sees you, when nominal Christian sees you, when backslidden Christian sees you, when people who's hungry for money sees you, they're going to look at you as a bad attitude. Whenever you go out there in the street preaching, you know, preaching on the street, telling people that they're on their way to hell, but Jesus is the only way, and people, you know, give you fingers, cusses at you, they see that, you know, even though they're showing their own carnal attitude, they think you are, you know, administering bad attitude, but it's not, right? To world's view, bad attitude means godliness, right? To world's view, righteousness is bad attitude. Right now, everything is backwards. Everything is backwards. You know, whether we have brethren, you know, coming from, you know, different countries like Korea and Japan or, you know, our folks here, you see that everything is turning upside down, right? Man is a woman. Number one, woman is a man, and everything in between, right? I mean, it's even hard to memorize all these acronyms now, right? It's like LGBT, T, Q, Q plus, and then you, they just keep on adding more and more and more. What are they doing? And if you preach anything against it, if you say anything against it, they're like, oh, you have a bad attitude. That's not. First of all, you have to make sure that your attitude is based on the Word of God. That's always number one. I mean, if your attitude is not based on the Word of God, you know, it's never going to go far. 
is always going to be your flesh, your carnal desires. When we see this Pharisee, you know, you could see why Pharisees there, why Pharisees are here today. And amongst Bible-believing Christians, we have too many Pharisees. You have attitude. You have attitude of exalting yourself. You have attitude of pretentiousness. You have attitude of hypocriticism. I mean, you're a hypocrite. I mean, I myself included. Many times, if you act differently at home than at church, you're a hypocrite. Yeah. I mean, that's 100%. Amen. If you're more blessing at a church, but you're a cursing at home, you're a hypocrite. Yes. You're more nice at church, but you're rough at home, or you're, you are not polite at home, you are a hypocrite. I mean, you say the right things. You show respect. You show charity and love at the church, but you show only anger and hate and disobedience at home. You are a hypocrite. Yes. It doesn't matter. I mean, I could witness. I could lead thousands of souls outside. But at home, if I'm a bad husband, at home, I'm not the you know, exemplary Christian that I should be as a man, then I'm a hypocrite. Yes. That's why a lot of people have it backwards. And this Pharisee shows it. They want to be that recognized person in the outside world. They want to bring all the accolades to themselves. They want to hear the clap all the time. Yeah. They want to hear the applause all the time. You know, they want to see their faces everywhere. You know, Dr. Ruckman had a very interesting take I don't know if you guys know a, a newspaper or a Christian publication called Sword of the Lord. You know, very famous amongst, you know, BBF crowd, right? If you look at, you know, Dr. Ruckman's stuff, he's the one who never promotes himself. He never goes out of his way, hey, look at me. He's one of the, you know, humblest person. If you have personally met him and if you ever, you know, heard of him, if you ever read his commentary, if you ever read his books, you know, you could see. You know, he emanates humility, even though he was probably the smartest man ever lived, you know? Yes. But this, you know, they were always jealous of Dr. Ruckman. So jealousy, if you guys have that jealousy and envy in your heart, you have to get rid of it. Kill it. I mean, literally. You know, yes. churches get split in half in, you know, four ways, you know, eight slices, because of people's jealousy and envy. And the devil's going to use it. And it ultimately, you know, leads to, you know, like your pride, your stubbornness, everything in between. And one of the publicators, you know, I will name him, you know, he always has his face on the front page. And then throughout the publication, he has like five of his faces. A lot of times, I think he averages out like seven times. I mean, I don't know about Jim, I don't really want to see my face, you know, in a publication like five, seven times. But some people love to see their faces. I mean, some people love to just be recognized. One of the things that you shouldn't be here today, you know, point number one, is because you pursue prestige. You shouldn't be here today, and you shouldn't be listening if you are pursuing prestige. What does that mean? You are seeking recognition. If you're out there winning souls to Christ, you know, you're doing the work of the Lord. Good. But don't expect me to announce to everybody all the time. You know, some people get butthurt, right? Some people are like, oh, man, I told pastor that I led 10 people to the Lord. Shouldn't he say something about it? I mean, do you want your reward here or do you want your reward up there? I mean, the more recognized you are here, the less rewards you're going to have there, right? Amen. Or, you know... Maybe after years of, you know, dressing bad, and then you finally dress appropriately, you know, at a church. And then you want me to recognize for doing what you were supposed to do in the first place, right? Or sometimes you bring, you know, we have a great cooks at our church, all right? Chef. You bring your food to the church, right? Because you love the Lord, you want to, you know, 
share with your brethren. And if you expect me to announce every time you bring your food to church and get recognition that, hey, you're the greatest chef in the world, you know, that's the wrong attitude. Yes. Right? And if you want to be recognized just because you're here, then why are you here today? Right. You shouldn't be here today. Amen. Just stay at home. Just enjoy yourself on your couch, on your bed, you know, watching TV. Or go to the beach. Go to the mountains. That is not going to help anybody. See, you and I are here today not to be recognized. Amen. You and I are here today for different reasons. It should be. I mean, that leads to second point. You shouldn't be here because if you are looking for popularity, if you're craving popularity, you shouldn't be at the church. You shouldn't be at our church. You know? We're not here to vote who's the prettiest, who's the handsomest. We're not here to vote you know, who's the clown, right? Class clown. We're not here to vote, you know, who's the smartest, right? Who's the best dressed? No. That is not the reason why we're here. If you're here for popularity reasons, you know, you shouldn't be here. Amen. You're like that leaven, you know. Leaven is the whole lump. Yes. You're the bad apple amongst the hundreds of good apples. That's going to ruin everybody, right? You're that little poison, you know. Yeah. That's going to spread to everybody. That's why if you're here for prestige, seeking recognition, or if you're here for popularity, then you shouldn't be here. I mean, you shouldn't even be listening, right? Because a lot of people who listen online, they listen because they want to gather as much information as possible, and they want to become popular. You know what? I know what Pastor Jay said. You know what Pastor Gene said. You know, you know what other this pastor said. You know, and then it's not for the edification of the saints. It's for their own knowledge, showing everybody that, you know, I know a lot, right? We don't need to know that you know a lot, right? Right. I mean, you don't need to tell me that you're a genius, right? I mean, you don't need to tell your people around you, hey, as, again, it's for your, if it's all for your own recognition and your popular, popularity, yeah, you know. Summer camp, I always memorize verses. You know, I never miss a year. I always memorize everything, right? What's the purpose? I mean, what's that going to do? Then usually it's tell it to people who doesn't memorize it, right? When they're around. Wow. Like, ah, oh, you know. I know that, brother, especially, you know, shame on older people, right? Yeah. You know, older people never memorize, right? Their brains are slower nowadays, right? But that's not an excuse. Never an excuse. Like, and we, you know, we have older sisters who's coming from Korea. You know, they got to be a good example, right? And they should memorize everything, you know? I mean, I myself should memorize everything, right? And everybody who's, you know, you should just memorize it. It's for your own good. But you shouldn't be out there waving that, you know, memory verse, you know, and then you're waving at everybody. Hey, I memorize. Who's with me? You memorized it? Lee's? Did you guys memorize it already? You know? Oh, man. That's craving prestige and popularity. Yes. Yeah. And the, another reason, you know, people are here today or listening for material prosperity. And so many people are at church. Why? Because they want that prosperity, right? And we have too many crooks out there, false teachers out there. Yes. All they say is, oh, yeah, if you come to our church, you know, God will bless you. You know, make sure to bring your credit card, right? We have many forms of payment. I mean, many forms of offering, right? Yeah. Touch the screen. You know, we have too many, you know, crooks out there on TV, evangelists. Yes. Touch the screen. You'll be blessed. Do you know why your bank account is not increasing? Because you haven't given enough. No. I don't know how much you have to give. You've got to give more than that if you want Lord to increase your bank account. From their mouth, I mean, literally, you know, I love money. 
I mean, going against the word of God. I mean, the love of the money is root of all evil, but they are practicing that to people listening. Yes. If your goal here, if you are here because you want to gain some material prosperity, you're at the wrong place. I mean, when people say, you know, I want to increase my business, do you know where they go? They go to church. Yeah, they go to church. I mean, church has become a social club where people hand out business cards. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, you know, I have this plumbing business. Here you go. If you have any plumbing needs, right? You know, I, I, you know I'm a contractor. You know, you know I mean, I sell this. You know, hey, hey, you know, what's, what's brothers in Christ good for, right? Help each other. I mean, when you, if your purpose here is, to, is for your material prosperity and your social advancement, you're at the wrong place, right? Because that only reflects your attitude and your spiritual state, especially if you're a saved Christian, as a Pharisee. Right? Yes. You just, you just want to be recognized. You just want to show to people that, you know what? You know, I could give more tithe than you. Right? Because I have more. And, I mean, God forbid, I hope none of the folks here and who's listening goes out of your way and telling people how much I give to the church. Right? Oh, no. I mean, that's the last thing you want to do. That's between a person and the Lord. Amen. Right? You should, especially young people, you shouldn't be, you know, waving your bills around. Hey, this is how much I'm going to tie today. You know? And... You, sh- you have to understand that, you know, your material, everything, it just comes from God. Yes. He could take it away just like that. Yes. You know, don't be fooled by the world. Don't be Amen. fooled by the devil. Don't be fooled by the, you know, flesh. You know, you could be a millionaire today and you could be broke tomorrow. Yes. It's up to God, right? But one thing is that you have to do your best at whatever you do. Amen. Right now? But God promised that he's going to provide all your needs. Thank you, Lord. And you shouldn't be here. Next point is because for your performance and rituals. I mean, we have a great exemplary folks out there. You know, like every morning, sometimes I drive by, I see a literature stand. And then a couple of people, very well dressed, just standing next to it. You know? And then we have people in nice robes, right, at a church and passing out or doing this, you know, sacraments. They're all there for performance. Yes. And they're just following the rituals. If you are here today just for the sake of following rituals and for your own performance, you shouldn't be here. Amen. I mean, go act somewhere else. Go to, you know, Jada. Yeah. Go to Catholic Church. Yeah. Go to Presbyterian Church. Go to BBF Church. Go somewhere else and do your performance. We don't need it here because our, this local church, precious local church, Amen. bought through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's not a place for you to be an actor. You, you shouldn't be acting here. You gotta be who you are. Yes. I mean, if you are here to do some performance, you know, I try to give benefit of the doubt to people all the time, right? Because, you know, as a pastor, you know, when you're leading the sheep, right, you want them to do well. And you could fool me a lot. But however, you can't fool God. Amen. One day, your performance will be judged and exposed in front of everybody. Yes. So if you're here to show your performance, you know, don't, don't be here. That's a wrong reason to be here and listening today, right? And that's where, you know, hypocrisy comes up, just like the Pharisees. You're here today. <laughs> you know, I think I despise kids who helps everybody at church, but who doesn't do anything at home, right? You, <laughs> I, mean, when, I mean, you wanna say, if I'm walking in, suddenly you weren't doing anything, you start moving. Oh, man, pastor, pastor sees my performance, you know, right? And then Pastor Kim walks by. Uh, you're just lollygagging and doing nothing, twiddling your thumb. 
And suddenly, man, you're carrying stuff, you know? <laughs> but brother's been working since 9 a.m. And then suddenly, you know, you're doing something, right? Don't make church a place of your performance and rituals. You just got to be honest. Just be who you are. Amen. You know, I've gone through it, a lot of people, and especially, you know, parents here, right? You have responsibility. Right? Your kids shouldn't be going home and telling you, hey, mom, hey, dad. No, you didn't say any cuss words at church. What happened? You know? Because at home, you have foul mouth, right? And the kids are like, hey, you were so nice to mom today. How come you don't act like that at home? Vice versa. Right? Oh, mom, you know, you're so nice to dad at church. Well, how come at home, you know, you're always trying to eat him alive, right? Make his life, you know, really hard. Same thing with kids. You know, even the youngest kids, you know, they got brains. They know what's right and wrong. Yes. You know, when, for example, like another brother or sister tells them what to do, they do it without any questioning, right? But at home, man, they're like, why? Right? <laughs> why me? No, I'll do it next time. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow, Dad. I'll do it tomorrow, Mom. You know, I, you know what? It's not that important. But at church, if someone tells that kid to do anything, they do it right away. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so quick to do everything. So don't make this place. And don't come to this place if you're going to act. You know, if you're going to be a performer, you know, do it somewhere else. Yeah. I mean, there's a career for it out there, right? Yes. Go to a playhouse, you know, try to right. become something out there, but not at this church. And another reason that you shouldn't be here today, if you just want to pass time, right, then you shouldn't be here today. You know, some people have nothing better to do. And they just go to some places and just so that time will pass by. I mean, it's a you know, pretty sad life. You're at a place just to let the time pass away, you know. I guess you have really no purpose in your life. Yes. I mean, you shouldn't be just turning on this video or online just to let the time pass by. You know? Because a lot of people do that. You know, but sometimes you, you want that white noise, right? If you're working, right? And then you play some hymns or whatnot, even have the preaching going on. But if you are here today just to pass time out of habit, like an entertainment, no, you shouldn't be here. There are plenty of entertainment out there, mm -hmm. you know, but this is not a place of entertainment, right? This is a place where you want to get right with the Lord. Amen. This is a place where you want to be, you know, convicted. This is a place yes. where you want your heart to move in the right direction. Yes. And lastly, you know, you shouldn't be here, you know, if you want to show your pious appearance, right? Again, it relates to, you know, how you act outside of church, right? You can't just expect God to be pleased with you when you act all pious at church, all godly at church. But outside of church, you're a totally different person. I tell you, your speech shouldn't be different outside of church. You shouldn't be using only the Word of God and Bible verses, speaking to brethren inside this confinement of church. Right. Then that's just showing pious appearance. Right? You should stand up for what's right everywhere. Yes. And you shouldn't be like a lot of these you know, religious organizations and cults out there. You shouldn't be here just to fulfill religious obligations. Right? They do it a lot of times because they want to go to heaven through their works. They want to show to people. You're not here to do that to go to heaven. Because you sit where you are every Sunday, that never means you're going to heaven. Yeah. Because you turn into this you know, online you know, sermon every Sunday, doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Right. I mean, that's only through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's it, Him alone. So don't be here today if you want to show pious appearance, like just like the Pharisee. Then, 
what should be the reason you are here today? I mean, number one thing is if you aren't saved because you're seeking salvation. Amen. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you, you're, you should be here and you should be listening because you don't know where you're going after you die. So you want to know for sure where you're going after you die. Amen. Right? And it's quite simple, right? I mean, even in the Old Testament, right? Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. I mean, it's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Woo! All you have to know is that you are a sinner on your way to hell. Yes. Believe that Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. And trust him with repenting heart, turning from your ways, receiving him as your Lord and Savior. Then the Bible says you have eternal life. Amen. I mean, John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Such a simple plan of salvation where even youngest of the little kids, you know, they can get saved. Yes. So if you're here, Seeking salvation, you're at the right place, right? Yeah. And if you are saved, then you should be here because you are surrendering to serve. Why are, what's the meaning of our life as a Christian? We want to serve. Amen. But who do you want to serve? You want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Matthew 16, 24 says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. You have to be surrendering. Not just parts of your body, but all of your body. All of your life. Yes. To the Lord. Many people always struggle to give up everything to the Lord. They always try to keep 2%, right? 98% they give to the Lord, every part of their life. But that 2%, they want to do something on their own. And that 2% usually grows up to be 5% sooner than later, 10%, 25 50 and it takes over. Yeah. That's why people constantly backslide because... You don't know that you've given up. You've surrendered instead of to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've surrendered to your flesh, the world, the devil. And unless you are vigilant, sober, unless you are alert constantly, you are going to forget that, man, I haven't surrendered. No, I mean, we have a hymn, I surrender all, right? I mean, you make commitment that I'm going to surrender all to Lord Jesus Christ. But does your life show that you have surrendered to him at every part of your life? This is why I want to hear strong preaching. Because I need that conviction. Amen. Because, I, I mean, not all parts of my, my life is always surrendering to the Lord. Yeah. Because I'm not perfect. Right. But when you hear the word of God. When you read the Word of God, when you pray, you can know it again. You can examine your spiritual state. Yes. Have I surrendered all to the Lord? And next point is that, you know, it's a good reason you're here today if you want to study the Word of God. Yeah. I mean, without saying, you know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says what? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. Sometimes you can't do it on your own, right? You need teaching. I mean, I mean, that's why, you know, some folks, you know, go to Bible college because they want to study, right? Yes. I mean, tell me, like, you read Revelation and then you read some of these difficult, you know, prophets. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, the Lord's going to give me all the wisdom to learn. No, it doesn't come like that. You have to put in work. You can't be like this, some charismatics out there, you know, these cuckoos out there. Yeah, Lord interpreted, you know, Isaiah for me, Daniel for me, yeah. Revelation for me, you know. Wow. That's how it works. You know, this is how Adam and Eve were created, right? And 
of course, devil gives them this, you know, vision. And especially, like, we have folks from Korea, you know, we have, they're very religious people, and there are a lot of cuckoos out there. Yes. Yeah. They say they're Jesus Christ. You know, I am the Jesus Christ, you know. Oh. You know, I am the Son of God, you know. I mean, they're like, you know, I am God's prophet. He speaks through me. And then people actually follow that. Why? Because they don't really study the word of God. Yeah. Man, without saying, this is, you know, rhetoric, rhetorical question at its best. You know, I mean, have you been studying the word of God lately? I don't care if you graduated from a Bible college. But what's important is right now. Yes. Are you studying the word of God right now? I mean, are you like really seeking the word of God? And I'm not saying that studying the word of God requires two hours every day or a four hour lecture, you know, but are you really spending some time, you know, take some time out of your day really studying the word of God? And we have so many materials out there, right? Yes. And not just studying, are you reading the Word of God? Right? Some people, oh, they're so deep into just studying and studying, just doctrine after doctrine, you know, they forget that you just got to read the Word of God. Yeah. You have to read the Word of God. Amen. Right? Because that's why some of them, they get out of context. Yes. They know so much about the Word of God, but only at certain places. They don't know the whole Word of God. That's why they think that salvation, even the Old Testament people have to believe in Jesus Christ to go to heaven, right? I mean, they think that, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, you know, transition time, every period has same salvation plan. Why? Because they don't read the Word of God. Right. You have to read the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. You know, as we discussed, you know, during the announcement time, names are important. Yes. Some parts of the Bible, it's all about names and the laws. You have to read it. It's there. Why? Because it's important. Every word, every punctuation mark is important. And you have to read it. Yes. Yeah, so are you studying Word of God or you want to be challenged? Do you want to be convicted to study more? Then you're at the right place. And next one, you know, I don't like using this word, but, you know, one of the reasons should be that, actually, I, I just changed it. You are here because you want to spread the good news. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Because you want to be challenged. You want to be convicted Amen. to be out there yes. and preach the gospel yes. to every creature. That's why you and I are here today. It shouldn't be just confined into just this place or online. Once we're outside in the world, we should be spreading the gospel Amen. at any moment. You know, Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to just people you like? No. You know, just the poor? No. He said, to every creature. Amen. That's why, you know, sometimes, man, I need to be here. Just be reminded. Yes. Man, I've been so selfish with my life, you know, I mean, what have I been doing when it comes to spreading the gospel? I mean, am I doing it at every turn? Am I doing it at every moment? Because Lord gave up his life for us, Thank you, Lord. and it's his command, and you want to please him, you have to spread the gospel yes. at any moment. And it's not as difficult as people think. You have chick tracks. Pass them out. Amen. Only thing they could do is, no, yeah. I don't want it. Right. Then go to the next person. Yes. And then if you have more opportunity, God opens the door, and you start talking about Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. what he has done for you. you know, if, if my mom died for me, I'll just go up to a stranger. Hey, man, you have a mother? Yeah. I mean, you must have a mother to be here on earth, right? <laughs> You know, you're not here because of two daddies, yeah. you know. You're here because you have a mother, Amen. right? Uh, That's right. Let me tell you about my mother. She died for me. And they're going to be like, oh, man, that's such a heartwarming story, you know. They'll listen, right? Yes. But I mean, 
Go one further. Tell someone, hey, let me tell you about somebody, you know, someone who saved me from eternal lake of fire once and for all, Amen. you know, taking my place. Yeah. Hey, talk to them. That's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you want to know him? You know, I know you heard of him. I mean, do you truly want to know him? Come on. Hey, worst thing that they could do to you is say no. Yes. I mean, if you could even suffer for him, great, right? Yes. But if you don't take that step, initial step to do it, you never do anything. Why are you here today? I mean, if it's not one of those reasons, you know, those wrong reasons, like for prestige, popularity, you know, performance, you know, prosperity, if you're here for the right reason, then you have to go out of these doors and start spreading the gospel. That's why you're here. Because, you know what? I want to be convicted by the Holy Ghost I want from the Word of God, yes. from the preaching, Yes. So that I'll be rejuvenated. I'll be recharged. Because we all need recharging Amen. spiritually in this wicked world. Yes. And go out there and preach the gospel Amen. at every moment. Yeah. Then you're like, man, I needed this. Right? That's why I'm here. That's why I'm listening today. And we'll finish with this first. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Above, I mean, above everything, why are you and I here today? If someone were to ask you, why were you made? You have a right answer. Perfect answer in the Word of God. If someone were to ask you, you know, write an essay. Give me an answer. Why are you here? Why am I here? And then they give all this, you know, philosophical answer. Just go to Revelation 4.11. It will just blow their, you know, brains off, you know, like, whoa, you know. Revelation 4.11, the Bible says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That's it. We're here because for Lord's pleasure, for his glory. Yes. That's it. Then if you want to bring pleasure and glory to the Lord, he gave you, he laid out what you need to do. And then we discussed it today. I mean, if you're not saved, you must get saved. Yes. I mean, you have to surrender all your life to serve the Lord. And you have to study the word of God all the time. Whenever you get a chance and you need to spread the gospel all the time. Whenever you get a chance. Then, Revelation 4.11, man, I want to testify, you know, at the judgment seat. You know, when I could throw some crowns at him. Man, yes. Lord, I was created for your pleasure. Yes. I was created to bring glory to you. Amen. You know, here are some of the crowns that I could throw at you. Lord, man, wouldn't you want that day to come? Hallelujah. I mean, we want Lord to come back right yes. now. Amen. I mean, right now. Yes. Then if you want Lord to come back right now, then you are here today, not for the wrong reasons, but for the right reasons. And if those are very simple, you know, four things. If you don't, I think everyone here has done the first one. So you got three more, right? You know, surrender, yes. study, and spread. Yes. That's all you got to do. And your Christian walk will be ever closer to the Lord. You have right fellowship with the Lord. And when people see you, they're going to know that you're not a performer. Man. You are honest and you're true. That's what we want. You know, when someone talks about you, if they don't think you're true and honest and real, then that's the worst testimony. Yeah. As we are light in this world, we have to be that true, honest face of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Amen. Because, you know, Pastor Shrive said it many, many times as well. You're the only Bible they'll ever see. What kind of Bible do they see in you? Let's pray. Dear Father, many times we, we get backslidden and we don't surrender all to you. And parts of the reason that we come to church is for the wrong reasons. 
We come for prestige. You know, we just come to pass time. You know, many times, you know, it's for just prosperity issues, you know, recognition. Help us to get rid of all of our fleshly desires, Lord. And help us to truly understand why we are here, why you were here, why we were created. To bring glory to you, to bring pleasure to you, Lord God. We can't wait for you to come back, but we want to be found as a faithful servant, Lord. I pray that you will bless everyone here and whoever wasn't able to make it, please be with them and all the folks who's listening. I pray that we'll be challenged and convicted to do more for you, realizing our purpose here on earth. I pray that you bless the rest of the service and upcoming summer camp. And I pray that you come soon, Lord. In just name we pray. Amen. That's awesome.